Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, my name is Jono. Apologies for uh, my rather intrusive mic here. Unfortunately, my Lavelle mic seems to have developed a fault uh, and I'm stuck with this one now until I can get a replacement. But uh, hopefully the sound quality uh, makes it worthwhile. Uh, apologies for no video uh, recently. Work has just unfortunately been uh, a little bit manic. But I'm back now with uh, a new video uh, all about a new camera, which of course, is vintage. Let's waste no more time. Let's have a quick have a look. So there we go. This is the uh, Asahi Pentax S1A. So from about 1957, uh, Pentax brought out a range of um, M42 mount 35 millimeter SLRs. Um, you might remember the M42 mount that I described um, in earlier videos. It's basically a very simple screw mount, 42 millimeter, hence the name, uh, for attaching the lenses. Uh, very common fitting and means there's lots and lots of lenses available uh, for M42 cameras and quite often at very reasonable prices as well. Um, so that was in 1957, and then they brought out uh, the Pentax S, K, and so on and so forth. This particular one is the S1A, and it was kind of an entry-level uh, version. Quite a nice camera, but, but very, very basic, um, which I'll go, go into in more detail in a moment. Uh, and so the S1A came out in 1963. And from what I remember, I think the last of the Asahi Pentaxes, the Spotmatic, uh, I think it was the ES2 was the last one. Um, might have been the F, I'm not sure. Anyway, 1973, so about 10 years later. Um, so a good run, good set of cameras, still plenty of them on the market these days, and most in sort of reasonable condition. Uh, obviously, shop around if you are looking to get one. So I'll come back to the lens in a moment, but let's just sort of take a look at um, some of the controls, etc. If we start on the back like I usually do, as I said to you, this is a very simple camera. Um, there is no metering. OK, uh, I'll talk more about that in a moment. But basically, uh, in order to get um, a decent uh, photograph, the right exposure settings or whatever else, you're going to have to use another method. Uh, there's no built in light meter, no metering involved at all. Um, so over here we have the wind back uh, crank, uh, which, as on many cameras, lifts out. Uh, and obviously we can then use that then for winding the film back into the camera. Um, it lifts up so that you can easily take the film out the back, but unlike uh, many other cameras, that doesn't actually open the back. You do that by way of a little uh, clip here, if you like, pull that down and the back opens out. Uh, and as you can see inside, pretty typical of a 35 millimeter SLR. Uh, this is where the film goes when you first load it. Uh, drags across the back here. Here we have the shutter, which are fabric uh, shutters. And if I wind on, you'll see as the camera cocks, uh, it drags across. And then when I fire the shutter, uh, you'll see that it flips back again. Uh, we've got a sprocket up to here for obviously um, drawing the film across. And we've got our take up spool here uh, with the slots in ready to uh, put our film leader in. Other than that, pretty basic pressure plate, etc. etc. So let's close that back over. In the bottom of the camera, we have our recess mount for a tripod, and we have a little uh, release button. Obviously, when we're done uh, with our film, we want to wind it back uh, uh, into the canister. We need to press this first to release the film off the sprockets uh, that we can wind back. Here we have our viewfinder. Um, and uh, obviously being an SLR, it means that we're actually looking through the lens uh, and there is a mechanism for helping you focus. Um, but I'll talk about uh, more about that in a different video. Um, we've got our shutter speed here, a um, little unusual on here um, in that. Uh, OK, so first of all, we've got um, five hundredths of a second all the way down to one second or up to one second, whichever way you look at it. Uh, there is B there for bulb. Uh, which obviously when you press the shutter down and hold it down, uh, that leaves the shutter open. Um, there is actually a one thousandth of a setting as well. So the line indicates where 
um, what shutter speed we're using. So that's 500th, that's uh, 250th, etc. There is a gap uh, just above 500, but it's not marked. But that actually is 1,000th of a second. Not quite sure why uh, it's not marked, but uh, there you go. There's also another uh, setting here of T, uh, which is uh, a little unusual. I don't think I've shown you a camera with this on before, and indeed there aren't many cameras with this on. Uh, the T basically is another way of uh, doing a very long exposure. So uh, if I set it to bulb, for instance, like I said to you, hold down the shutter button and that will hold the shutter open. Uh, all very well, but obviously it means that you've got to obviously be holding the camera. Um, and if you're taking very long exposures, obviously that can cause movement and you might get blurring, etc. So the normal method for combating that is the little th uh, recessed threaded hole here. Uh, we will put a manual cable release in there. And I've done a video uh, on cable releases before, and I'll leave a link up in the uh, top right hand corner there for you. Um, and that's obviously great. That means you can hold the shutter open without actually touching the camera. Uh, but another option on this one, which is say is a little unusual, and I'm not really sure I'd ever use it, but it's there just in case. If we set it to T, spin it around to T, and you can see there's a little notch next to it. I'll come back to the notch in a moment. Uh, but what happens then is if I wind this on and press the shutter, that now, uh, the shutter is now still open. Even though I'm not holding the button down, uh, the shutter is still open. Uh, and the way that I would then close the shutter when I'm done taking the exposure is I just change it from T to any other setting and you can hear the shutter close again. Um, as you've seen, we've got our crank here, um, basically for winding the film on. And uh, you can probably make out there's the um, uh, shutter count here, which auto advances every time I wind on, uh, it advances to the next number. Um, another thing we've got here is a little tiny indicator to tell us whether the film's wound on or not. Um, so it's black at the moment, which means that the uh, film is not wound on. If I wind on, you can see it changes to red. And then when I press the shutter button, it goes back to, to black again. Round to the front then. Um, not much to, to show you really. I'll come on to the lens in a moment because obviously lenses change uh, being uh, an SLR. We can swap them out, but I'll come back to the lens in a moment. Just down here, we have uh, two points for a flash. Uh, so we've both got the X-Sync and the uh, uh, FP version of the ports there. Um, I keep promising, but I will do a video on these different type of flash, flash uh, synchronization, different type of flash ports uh, in another video at some point. So this lens here then, uh, this one is um, uh, auto Soligor lens, this is a 50mm lens um, and this one is f2.8 but obviously it can change um, as I said to you as long as you're using M42 mounts and there's plenty of choice out there of lenses. I'll just screw this off and you can see inside we've got the mirror there etc etc ready for the, uh, uh, to fit another lens on it. So screw that back on. So the only other thing I haven't shown you uh, on top uh, next to the rewind crank, uh, you can see that we can actually uh, set the speed of the film that we've got inserted. But as I said to you, without any kind of metering, uh, that is uh, basically just a reminder for you. It doesn't actually have any effect on the way the film is uh, exposed, etc, etc. So... As I said to you, no metering, no auto exposure settings. So you're going to have to use some kind of uh, uh, other method uh, for gauging that, uh, whether that be the Sunny 16 rule, which is not something that I've um, talked about before, but I will do a video on it. But it's basically a, a way for you to guesstimate the correct settings. Um, either that, it's going to be an app on your phone or it's going to be um, a handheld light meter, uh, much like I showed you in a previous video. And again, I'll put a link up uh, here for that. Um, there was, however, a um, an, a, an additional uh, device you could get. It wasn't part of the camera uh, on your purchase. You had to sort of purchase it separately. I don't have one, but it was a light meter that basically fitted on top of the camera here, clipped over the top of the viewfinder. Um, and that's what this notch is for because the um, 
the device had a, a fitting that would actually slot into that slot and so another shutter um, knob here um, would obviously turn this one by way of that um, by way of that notch it would drive it as you turned it um, there may be a couple of videos on YouTube featuring that as I say I don't know but it's as I say they're a little bit rare I don't have one um, you know I would rely using this camera I would rely on a, on a third party uh, way of doing uh, measuring the, the light etc but there you go that's it that's the uh, Asahi Pentax S1A um, mine's not in great condition but it's not bad I have used it once um, and mediocre results but that's nothing to do with the camera itself it's just uh, the poor state of my particular model um, but yeah not bad at all I'd definitely recommend you trying to track one down that's in good condition and uh, yeah enjoying it for what it is a nice simple but well-made camera Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Quite a nice camera, the Asahi Pentax. Um, once again, thank you, everyone, for your support. It really is appreciated. Um, I couldn't uh, keep this channel going without it, and uh, I really am grateful. So if you've liked, subscribed, commented, or even just watched, I really do appreciate it. Um, take care of yourselves, and uh, I'll see you again soon.